Welcome to Dark Corners with David Allen Boyles. Dark Corners is brought to you by Gestalt Media, an independent publishing company dedicated to serving independent authors. When one plays with death, the outcome of the game is usually predictable. Dead Man's Hand Great One, I am weary of the task. I beg to be given my own death so that I might rest at last. The tall robed figure bowed its hooded head. Flickering orange light from the wall sconces cast shadows on his skeletal face. The only sound was rhythmic dripping from the darkness beyond. Suddenly, the flames of each torch flared brilliantly, and a voice echoed through the cavernous crypt. You have served faithfully for many years. For that service, I will grant your wish. Three candidates will come to you, and from those, you must pick your successor. I care not of your method. But remember, the choice once made cannot be undone. The Reaper nodded slowly, turned, and began his silent exit from the crypt, the flames sputtering out as he passed. Three ghoulish figures sat at the table in the dank chamber, their eyes blazing with excitement over the prospect of what might befall them. They had reason to be excited, for each had been summoned from everlasting torment and offered a chance, not only of freedom, but an existence of pain-free immortality. The winner would also enjoy the ability of seeing into every public and private moment of each mortal on earth, no matter how glorious or depraved. Nothing was secret to a reaper. And in that role, they would be tasked only with the responsibility of greeting each earthly soul as it shed its mortal body and escorting it to its final reward or punishment. I have seen some depraved acts in my day, but just think of what I might witness as a reaper, Enoch said. Ah, the joys of young flesh. You were the cause of some of the worst of those depravities, said Eric through his rigid, constant grin. Was there ever a victim too young to draw your attention? The younger, the better, eh, my friend? said Ivan, clearly savoring a vivid memory from his own sordid past. At least I took them while they were still alive, my Cossack friend, Enoch fired back. Well, most of them at least. As long as they were warm when I fetched them from the crypt, I didn't mind. The three men laughed, but were silenced when their host slammed the deck of cards onto the table. His bony fingers shuffled with such sharp, even precision that the cards clicked neatly into a pile that seemed the result of a machine. Although eyeless, he kept his gaze staring straight ahead and lay four cards out perfectly, each one face up before each participant, including himself, on the table. The terms for this event were agreed upon, as was the bet. The outcome would be determined by a single hand of cards. Any sense of levity that had existed previously had evaporated from the chamber. They stared at the cards on the table, evaluating the hands and calculating their chances to win. A low voice, barely more than a whisper, broke the tense silence. Gentlemen, are you ready for the last cards? The grim faces around him nodded silently. The Reaper turned his cowled head to face each player at the table, and despite the absence of eyes, held the gaze of each one for several seconds before dealing the last round of cards. The Cossack sat to the Reaper's left and thus was the first recipient. His hand 
a pair of jacks, the five of diamonds, and the two of clubs. The possibility of two pairs with jacks high. Next sat the Frenchman, the eight of clubs, the ten of hearts, the nine of spades, and the jack of diamonds. Still, a good chance for a straight, he thought. Enoch, the sniveling undertaker, looked at his hand with hope. A pair of eights was all he had so far. But besides the four of hearts, he did have the ace of spades. Another ace, and he would have two pairs, ace high. The reaper played two, although why was a mystery. If he won the hand, no one won the game, for didn't he wish to give up his role of reaper of souls? Before him sat the king of hearts, the seven of diamonds, the two of spades, and the seven of clubs. So only a pair of sevens so far. But he could draw another king, which would possibly make him the winner. The moment was nigh. If the ghouls were capable of breathing, they would have been holding those breaths. The reaper laid down the first card with a snap before the Cossack. A five of hearts. Two pairs, jacks high. Ivan chortled and slapped the table while the others glared at him. Eric needed a seven or a queen to fill out his straight. The sharp sound of the card on the table made him jump. The six of diamonds. In disgust, he pushed back from the table and crossed his arms over his chest. Enoch watched the reaper's hands so intently he was unaware of the drool that spilled from his open mouth as he leaned in. He squealed with delight <laughs> as he saw the ace of clubs placed before him. Two pairs, aces high. No matter what the reaper drew, no one could beat him. Go ahead, almighty death, cried Enoch. Let's see what you draw at any rate. The reaper silently set the next card from the deck before him the king of spades. Two pair kings high! Not enough, my bony friend! Enoch could not contain his glee. The others frowned and slumped in their seats. What say you now, ex-reaper? In a voice little more than a whisper, the reaper spoke. At first glance, you seem to have won. But apparently I need to remind you of the special nature of your hand. Do you know what it's called? Eric straightened in his chair and leaned over to study Enoch's cards more closely. Oh, two pair. Aces and eights. It's a dead man's hand. So called, since its origin is the hand held by one James Butler Hickok, better known as Wild Bill, said the Reaper. He was shot dead in a saloon. That hand has been cursed ever since. And now, that curse falls on you. The Reaper paused to let the impact sink in. With your disqualification, I hold the winning hand. That's not fair, screamed Enoch. You're making up rules as you go. But even as he spoke, his body began to glow slightly. The chair in which he was seated became visible through his body as his image became fainter. The other two players shouted in protest as well. But just like Enoch, they too were beginning to disappear. Nevertheless, they are my rules to make. I feel a sense of divine justice at work here, and a sense of relief as well, for I must admit that seeing any of you in the role of Reaper disgusts me. Death should be accompanied with a sense of dignity and compassion, traits foreign to any of you. Suddenly, the chamber was silent. The card table and chairs vanished as the Reaper stood. 
As he stared out at the space where those objects had been, the torches flared and a divine voice rang out, filling the chamber. So you no longer are weary of your task, Reaper? The Reaper nodded. Oddly, I seem revived, rejuvenated, a renewed sense of purpose. The thought of one of those wastrels serving in my place is revolting. I delight in knowing they all have returned to where they belong. And are you certain that you are where you belong as well? Yes, I believe so. The Reaper walked across the chamber to a dark corner where a long-handled scythe leaned. Gripping it in his bony hands, he turned and walked slowly but firmly across the dimly lit chamber, dust swirling behind him. And now, I have work to do. That concludes this episode of Dark Corners with David Allen Voiles. Music was provided by Mombi Yulman. To find other works by David Allen Voiles and keep up with all his projects, please visit his official author website, davidallenvoiles.com. Hope to meet you again soon in The Dark Corners.